but we don't understand that the story of the prodigal son goes far, far deeper than that. And I was raised for years thinking that that was just, just the meaning of the prodigal son, that one day many of us sometimes are disobedient, but we need to come back to God. We need to repent and come back and give our lives, give our heart to Christ, right? Well, no, this is so much deeper than that. So much deeper than that. Really, this is a story of these two houses. This is a story of the two houses. The younger son, Ephraim, okay, who, who is the younger brother, goes out and squanders his inheritance, is cast out amongst the nations for his dis- disobedience. And what happens? The younger son wakes up amongst the Gentiles, w- wakes up amongst the pigs of the day, and sees his disobedience and understands that I need to go back home to Papa. It would be better for me just to be a servant in his house rather than be out here amongst the nations, be out, be out here amongst the pigs. You know, that's another thing that's really interesting to note. Do you know that every time swine or pig is mentioned in your Bible, both Old and New Testament, it's used in the negative context every single time? There's a good clue. But we're talking about the prodigal son and that the younger son comes back. But what happens when the younger son comes back? Who's not happy about it? The father's happy. He goes out there and places a robe on him, puts a ring on his finger, and kills the fatted calf and throws a giant party. Well, who's not happy about it? Who gets upset and goes out of the house and, and, and pouts? It's the older brother. It's the older brother, Judah. <clears throat> That's what our Messiah is trying to tell these people. I believe the true meaning of the prodigal son is being opened up to us in these last days because we're understanding that Judah, many people of Judah are not happy about Ephraim coming home because the word has gotten out over in the, from the Western world over in that land over there. And the rabbis are going, why are all these people coming to us and wanting to know Torah? The Torah is not for these people. It's for us, for the Jews. Why are they coming out to us? Well, it's because Ephraim's coming home. And some of the rabbis, some of the more astute rabbis who know about the two houses of Israel are going are scratching their heads and going, maybe this is Ephraim coming home. Maybe this is the, the ten tribes, the northern kingdom, who was scattered out and who lost their identity, who forgot who they were, and maybe this is them coming home. Could it be? Could it be Ephraim coming home? Could it be that our Messiah, 2,000 years ago, gave a parable of the prodigal son that would tell us today of what is going to happen in the last days? that the younger brother would come home with a repentant heart and a desire to once again be in the father's house and once again be re- reunited with his brother Judah. You know, I had a rabbi tell me one day, he told me, what you're doing by clinging on to the Torah and making this your identity is worse than what the Nazis did to the Jews. This was a rabbi. A rabbi told me this on Twitter. He said, what you're doing by clinging to the Torah is worse than what the Nazis did. I'm like, you don't understand. I love you. I told, I, rep- I tweeted back to the guy. I said, I love you. You don't understand. You are my brother. I long to be in the house with my brother. I would die for you. I would fight for you. You are my brother. I love you. I want to come home. He didn't know what to do with that. He didn't understand what that meant. And, uh, you know, so th- there are, when you hear a lot of Jews today, Messianic or even Rabbinical Jews in the land, uh, the, the Orthodox Jews in the land, they have a very hard problem with people wanting to come home and be in the house. They have a very hard problem with people clinging onto that Torah. And they have a very hard problem, some of them, with two house. And 